Please be seated. <sighs> Good morning. My name is Lauren Strauss. I'm the Director of Religious Exploration here at First Parish. <sighs> I had to run home to get something right before this because I forgot it at home and really needed it. So here I am. <laughs> um, and so I'd love to say, have you all join me in saying good morning and welcome to church. Thank you. All right. So I could use help from all of the children and youth who would like to come up. Today, we are going to do a ritual um, in which we're going to write down our thanks, our things we're grateful for on pieces of fabric, and we're gonna weave them right into this loom here. Anybody wanna tell me what the problem with that is right now? <laughs> There's nothing on it. What should be on it? Does anybody know what it's called? The warp, right? You, the other thing is called either the weft or the woof. It's spelled the same way either either way, but my mom, who's a weaver, tells me it's woof, but nobody says that hardly anymore. Um, and the weft is the part you weave back and forth, but you have to have the warp first. The warp is the thing that holds it all together. So I have some warp here and I'm hoping that my friends here will help me to put it on. While we're doing that, two things are gonna happen. One is that 
Sky is going to come up and talk a tiny bit about undecorate the tree. And the other thing is that you all are going to have some time to contemplate the things that you are grateful for that you will be writing on your strips of fabric, which I hope you got when you came in. Where did y'all get food? That's awesome. Did anybody not get some fabric? All right, we got one down here. You're fine, okay. Uh, we're in the back, one other person. Bell choir, I'm guessing you did not. Do you want one? Okay. We'll, we'll get some fabric up to the balcony. All right. We're multitasking in church today. Um, and decorate the tree is a holiday giving, a holiday giving project, uh, which which helps Voices Against Violence um, and people who are in that organization. Um, we have a tree in the Huntley Room, in the Memorial Room, in Scott Hall, uh, where we have a tree with lots and lots of ornaments on it that we have to um, take care of and give to people. Uh, feel free to sign up um, after service in Scott Hall. Uh, there will be many people to help you. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me or one of the other people in uh, RA. So now is the time if you have fabric and you have a marker um, to write down something that you are grateful for, that you feel gratitude for. We'll be weaving these together later on in the service, and things will go a little bit faster if you've already written down your gratitude. Do we have some gratitude, in, improvisations on gratitude, Dean? Written especially for November 20th.
How are we doing on those gratitudes? Good? Okay, great. Yep, so I'm gonna finish putting this on as other things happen, but um, I wanted to, this is what I need. I wanted to show you um, basically how you're gonna weave in, which there's front and back. So you'll go under the, under the back and over the front. Thank you, Aaron, Reverend Aaron. And you just keep doing that until it's in, and then you pull it tight. You'll all have an opportunity to do that later. All right, great. So we'll do some of the weaving, I think, during the service and some of the weaving after the service, uh, noticing how many of you all are here. So, great. Today is a very special day in the life of our congregation. We are celebrating the formalizing of a special relationship with one of our prior staff and us as the current members of First Parish. Julie Porter served this congregation as Director of Religious Education and then Exploration. The title changed from from 2000 until 2014. Julie has always been very careful to respect and honor good boundaries and not overstep or interfere with the role of each other director of religious exploration who has followed her here at First Parish. She has remained available for counsel, support, encouragement, and collegiality. I would say that from the moment I arrived here, I began hearing stories about Julie's steady and comforting ministry, but I met Julie way before I even began here. Uh, Julie was on the ministerial search committee, so I first met Julie on a Zoom call on January 19th, 2020. But from that moment, I heard those stories about Julie's steady and comforting ministry of presence with so many children and families and her wise leadership. Throughout every conversation I had with Julie, I know that she is deeply committed to our faith, the vocation of religious exploration, and our parish as well. So Julie, how about you come forward? So even though that this is an honorary position, the distinction of being named Director of Religious Education Emerita carries with it the responsibilities to continue living a faithful Unitarian Universalist life, which you have done. It has been two th since 2014 since you've been in this position, so you have continued to do that. To honor the Liberal Religious Educator Association's ethical guidelines, and in doing so, be an example for the people of this congregation. Today, through this ceremony, we joyfully recognize you as one of this church's senior teachers and keepers of our faith, through whose commitment and faith development ministry we have inherited the congregation that we have today. So on behalf of the First Parish in Framingham and the spirit of life and love whose image shines through you in all that you do, it is my honor to officially present to you with this certificate as Director of Religious Education Emerita. Julie Porter in grateful appreciation of your 14 years of service as our director of religious exploration from 2000 to 2014 which included devotion to the faith formation of children and youth recruitment and support of our religious education volunteers 
service to the cause of liberal religious education beyond our church, mentorship of other religious educators, and advocacy for the needs of our families. We, the First Parish of Framingham, now joyfully recognize you as Director of Religious Exploration Emerita on this 20th day of November, 2022. So as one more thing to welcome you, will you, the congregation, please say, we welcome you as our Director of Religious Exploration Emerita. We welcome you as our Director of Religious Exploration Emerita. Thank you, congratulations. I just, I just want to say thank you so much. My um, first parish is rooted deeply in my heart and soul, and this just feels so wonderful. So thank you. So are we ready? Is the loom good? Great. Um, so we will now sing our children and teachers out to religious exploration. Um, when I asked Julie if she had a favorite hymn, uh, she told me two hymns and the shorter one of those, uh, the other was, what was the other? We laugh, we cry, yes. Uh, we'll sing that at some other point, but we will uh, sing hymn 346, Come Sing a Song With Me, as we sing our children and teachers off to religious exploration. One more time. In our community, there is great joy and there is also great sorrow. 
We set aside this time because we know that joy shared is joy expanded. And sorrow shared can feel as though someone is lifting a burden. You can write down your joys or sorrows in the book at the back of the sanctuary, or you can submit them online each week. So first, Vicki shares a joy. I'm happy to finally get my new hip on Monday and looking forward to walking again. <laughs> We have another joy from Robin who writes, I'm always invigorated to see the final flower of the year, the blue gentian, which only appears after early frost. You can find them at the bases of the ornamental trees in the courtyard on your way to coffee hour. They are gorgeous. Diane shares gratitude for the joy of family near and far as we welcome the holidays. And also some gratitude for the fullness of our pews as we rebuild. Now let us pause as we sing verse one of Comfort Me. shares this sorrow. My father's first cousin Leah died last Sunday. She was 100 years old. She always said she wanted to stay in her home and she did. She died in her own bed. She's the last of a generation. We have another concern this morning for all the people in Colorado Springs those injured and killed at an LGBTQ nightclub last night. And with that, let's now sing verse two of Comfort Me. Light one final candle for all the joys and sorrows which remain unspoken this morning. And together we can sing verse three of Comfort Me. Let us now take a moment to focus on our breath in, on our breath out. Take another comfortable breath. Noticing the chair that is supporting you and imagining a connection to the earth beneath you. The earth which has been here since before you were born and will be here after you die. The earth which has supported humanity for all of its existence. 
O spirit of life and love, named and unnamed, who calls each one of us beloved. We give thanks for this day, for a chance to heal, a chance to laugh, a chance to give thanks for what we have in this, our one wild and precious life. There is also much to mourn the death of loved ones. Five people killed in a shooting at a gay nightclub in Colorado Springs last night. We also ask for courage for those who are ill, lonely, mourning, living with addiction. We know as well that there is more work to do, more work to bring peace to our war-torn world. Also this day, we note that it is Transgender Day of Remembrance, remembering all those transgender and gender non-conforming people who were killed by violence this year, at least 32. We know there is more work to do. May we have the energy to work, to bend the arc of the universe towards justice. It will take a long time, but it is worth it. Because we are human, we know that we make mistakes. We are sometimes not our best selves because we are breathing and because of the integrity and the courage that we know is deep within us. We know that there is always time to rebuild, always time to say I'm sorry, always time to move forward. I say these words and do all things for love's sake. So let us now sit in the quiet of this old house so that we might listen to the sounds of our neighbors, so that we might rest, so that we might simply do nothing for one minute in our day. May it be so, and amen. As we prepare to take this morning's offering, may each of us 
look into not just our wallets or perhaps our checkbooks to see how much we have with us today. Let us look into our hearts as well and see what is available there. How much love, how much generosity, how much faith, how much gratitude, how much hope. And let us take our offering from that account. If this is your first time joining us, you are invited to let the offering pass you by. The offering will now gratefully be received. Thank you. Beautiful as always. Thank you. Thank you. 
So earlier in the service, we asked you to write down on a strip of fabric something that you are grateful for. Could be something big, could be something small. Now we are going to ask, I think some of you, you showed up really well today, uh, and I'm not sure about the time it will take. So some of you will uh, weave your gratitudes into the loom. Others can do it during coffee hour or in the receiving line afterwards. As you know, the children and youth of our congregation created part of this, and you will add to it. We weave, because as Carla Needleman writes in her book, The Work of Craft, weaving is the great classic symbol of the coming together and intermeshing of separate threads to make a new integrity. May our gratitude with the gratitude of the children come together to make something new. So, Dean, if we might have some weaving music. Do you have some uh, improvisations on weaving for a November day? <laughs> I know you've got that. So, all right. So, please come forward with your uh, with your gratitudes, and we'll get some of these woven in today. cold wind or the tawny hue of a winter landscape, to see the full miraculous essential, uh, essentialness of the color blue is to be grateful with no necessity for a word of thanks. To see fully the beauty of a daughter's face is to be fully thankful 
without having to seek a God to thank, to sit among friends and strangers as we do this morning, hearing many voices, strange opinions to intuit inner lives beneath surface lives, to inhabit many worlds at once in this world, to be a someone amongst all other someones, and therefore to make a conversation without saying a word is to deepen our sense of presence and therefore our natural sense of thankfulness, that everything happens both with us and without us, that we are participant and witness all at once. Now, the 13th century German mystic Meister Eckhart is believed to have said that if the only prayer you say is thank, thank you, then that will be enough. Too often I think that we forget gratitude, which is too bad because, as one of our hymns goes, all life is a gift which we are called to use. We forget to thank people for their presence in our lives. We, make th we take things for granted. We feel entitled. We have thoughts of greed and envy. I like what Frederick and Marianne Bursat write when they say that they think of gratitude as more like grammar, an underlying structure that helps us connect and make sense out of our lives. The rules of this grammar cover all our activities. Its syntax reveals a sense of relationship, linking us to the divine and to every other part of creation. That's the kind of talk that would make my hair stand up on end if it weren't for the pomade in it. An underlying structure that helps us construct and make sense out of our lives. When we account for the things that we are grateful for, we are noticing the things that we pay attention to. We are noticing the ways that we spend our time, our attention budgets. We know that monetary budgets are a statement of values, so then these attention budgets are also a statement of what we value. When we start to make these lists and we start to figure out our connections to the world around us, that can help us make sense of the world. Gratitude is tough. It is so easy to get cynical and caught up in everything else in this frantic season of shopping, of cooking, of wondering how on earth it will all get done, the travel, the food, the cleaning, the cooking, the cleaning, the awkward small talk with your uncle who you only see once or twice a year, the cleaning, That was more my list coming out. <laughs> this is why we forget to be joyful and why we forget to show gratitude because everything else tends to pile up. It is so easy also to forget about gratitude when there are massive problems in the world. It is so easy to think that the little things that bring us joy, the way a tree looks when the leaves are gone, our birthdays, the way that our animals interact with us, the food that we do have, the clean water that we drink, it is so easy to minimize those joys because there is so much else in the world. Maybe we don't share our joys or complaints because we compare them to other suffering and it doesn't feel equal to others' joy or others' suffering. A gratitude like, I am so glad I have clean water because other people elsewhere don't, feels challenging, feels violent. Yes, it is a miracle that you have clean water, but your gratitude does not change anything for the people who don't have clean water. You can celebrate the miracle that is clean water all by itself, and you can also acknowledge the suffering that is poor quality drinking water. Each joy or sorrow each gratitude or suffering exists on an axis of human need, just at different volumes or magnitudes. Food is a human need. Famine is on one end. Joy about a gourmet meal is on the other. Connection is a human need. 
a friend waving as they drive by, that might be a minor joy. A business trip away from family and pets might be a minor suffering. Celebrating a wedding is a major joy. A loved one dying may be major suffering. Sharing our joys, sharing the things that we are grateful for makes us joyful. There's wisdom from the Buddhist community in the concept of mudita. It is the sympathetic or vicarious joy or the pleasure that comes from delighting in other people's well-beings. It is the joy a parent or an aunt or an uncle has watching a child grow. It is the joy that a teacher has watching a student come into their own sense of who they are. The Buddha said, here, O monks, a disciple lets his mind pervade one quarter of the world with selfish, with thoughts of unselfish joy, and so the second, and so the third, and so the fourth. And thus the whole wide world, above, below, around, everywhere, and equally, he continues to pervade with a heart of unselfish joy, abundant, grown great, measureless, without hostility or ill will joy unadulterated joy unabashed gratitude is regarded as the most difficult thing to cultivate so if it feels challenging don't worry it is challenging may this tapestry that we will continue to weave after our service that we have already woven may this tapestry of our gratitudes and the community that it represents be strong. We will now close by singing our final hymn, which is number 349. A little bit of a history lesson before you rise in body or spirit. This hymn was written for Thanksgiving of 1963. Thanksgiving 1963. If you were alive that time, I don't need to tell you what happened. Robert Senkas, who was newly settled after graduating from seminary at, I think, the UU Church of Davis, California, and his wife, Dorothy, wrote these words to speak to the situation that our country found itself in after John F. Kennedy's assassination, just six days before Thanksgiving. It weaves together joy and sorrow. Let us rise in body or spirit. Thank you for joining us to worship this morning. Appreciation to our staff team, to Jan Miller, to Julie Porter, our ushers, Diane Bassett and Susan Moody, Tom Ostfeld, our tech operator who always has a new challenge every Sunday morning, <laughs> and our wonderful bell choir and choir members. Thank you all. I send you forth this morning with Eric Williams' words. We all emerge from, dwell within, are transformed by, and called back to love. May your mind be humbled before this mystery. May your heart grow hopeful by it. 
And may you be sustained by this love always. And now, as we extinguish our chalice, the symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith, until we are together again, may you hold the light always, and may the light of this community hold you always. With this deep gratitude for our sacred time together, go in peace and go in love. Amen. <laughs>